Welcome, everyone, to a special live edition of the Smarter Trading Podcast, where myself and our awesome guest today are going to be chatting all about the current market environment, where we see opportunities, and where there might be risks. We're doing this live, so we want to hear from you over the next hour. Drop us your thoughts and questions in the chat box throughout the show. And now for a couple of short announcements before we get started. Medeiros is the founder and CEO of The Trade Risk. All opinions expressed by guests are solely their own opinions and do not reflect the opinion of Evan or The Trade Risk. This podcast is for informational purposes only and should not be relied upon as the basis for investment decisions. Evan and guests may maintain positions in securities discussed in this podcast. This episode of Smarter Trading is sponsored by Investors Business Daily. IBD has been around for over 35 years, helping investors navigate each and every market cycle. If you want the best analysis and actionable trade ideas from the leader in growth investing, check out IBD Digital. Go to investors.com slash Evan, that's E-V-A-N, to get your first two months for only $20. Subscribe today and start trading smarter at investors.com slash Evan. Thank you, IBD, for supporting financial education and making this episode possible. Now, let's get on with the show. All right, here we go. Yeah. Hello, everyone, thanks for tuning in and being here live. This is our first live show, and we've got the man, Patrick Walker, back in the hot seat. Patrick, how are you doing? Good, Evan. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, buddy. It was, uh, I enjoyed the first one that we did together. And um, I, I like your work. I admire your work. If I didn't, I wouldn't be doing this. I'll just tell you that right now. But it's good. I like your I like your mindset. I like your approach and good personality and content. So, uh, yeah, this is great. It's great. And you also live in a beautiful area that I lived. I wish I lived in. Yeah. See, what Patrick doesn't uh, say there is I slipped him a few hundred dollars to come on the show. And, you know, that's that's why he's so nice to me all the time. That's sometimes <laughs> it just takes a little, uh, you know, a little cash. Uh, there you go. Bitcoin, baby. There it is. Bitcoin even faster. Oh, man. So, yeah, April, we got together. We talked uh, for all of you who may have missed that episode. We'll put a link in the description of this episode. But Patrick was on. He shared I think over an hour, uh, very generous with his time, shared lots of knowledge, very actionable advice. So I would highly recommend checking that out uh, just to learn more about sort of Patrick, what he's been up to. He's been trading for over 35 years, and he's he's learned from a lot of the greats that uh, we all have really taken pieces from, like Martin Zweig, Bill O'Neill, Ed Sakota, to name a few. So yeah. highly recommend checking out that episode and Patrick's work at Mission Winners. So before, today is all about uh, looking at the market and kind of current market analysis. It's been tough out there to say the least over the past couple of weeks. So Patrick and I are gonna look at some charts. We're gonna yeah. share some thoughts and I wanna start us off and then I'm gonna pass us to Patrick where he's gonna give us really the good stuff. But I wanna just share some high level, if I can find, see, I get too many tabs open and you know, that happens sometimes when we have too many tabs. So I want to give a little bit of a rundown here. There's the screen I'm looking for. Give a little bit of rundown here on the market numbers. And I think we're all sort of familiar with what's been going on out there, but Let's just set the scene a little bit here. I'm going to share my screen and we're going to just look at some quick stats. So I pulled this pretty much right before the market closed uh, today. And so this is what we're sort of looking at here as we kick mm -hmm. off 2022. We've got markets, indices that are all firmly in red territory right now. We see the Dow, the S&P, Russell, NASDAQ all below the 50 SMA. We're down about 2 to 7%. And, you know, it was a very tame 2021. And so now we're starting to see that volatility. Yeah. And I'm very excited to see kind of how Patrick's been navigating this. We're still mostly above the 200 SMA, but you can see things are obviously pretty weak. And if we take a look real quick at sectors here, only two are standing out in the green. This is year to date, right? So we have a big green one. That's energy standing really high on top of the mountain by itself. But Besides that, you got financials, which are still hanging on to some gains. 
it's been sort of painful out there. So, so that's the scene. And Patrick, I want you to kind of take over here. Feel free to share your screen. How are you thinking about the market? What's your, you know, what's the thought process? What are you staring at right now? And uh, give us a little bit of insight. I'll stop sharing my screen here now. Sounds good. Let's do it. And how do I share my screen here, good buddy? What do I? Uh, so it's going to be that share button down there. You should see it in the bottom middle of the. Oh, there screen. we go. I got it. Okay. And, and uh, uh, yeah, while we're moving along, folks, uh, leave some questions, comments for myself, Patrick. We are going to get to them. That is the plan for the show. So let us know what you're thinking about as we move along throughout this episode. I've got uh, slides, video file, and stop stop screen. Under uh, share. So let's see. There, there we it go. Is. I see there it. it is. I see it now. Does that look good to you? Looks great to me. I see S&P 500 front and center. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. First off, Evan, thanks for having me. Um, I got to do a webinar last year with Evan, and I'll be very honest and blunt. If if I didn't respect his work, I wouldn't do this. All right. There's a lot of people that are just like, what? No, 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 no. You're not helping people. But I like Evan. Uh, his foundations, they're very solid. They're pragmatic. They're not forecasting like, oh, this is what's going to happen. Nobody knows the future. And I always tell people this. When we set, accept the fact that we don't know the future, we see the future far more clearly. We just get in line with what is. That'll really help you. I've been doing this since 1986. I was there for the crash of 87, running money and everything else since. And one of the things I've learned is nobody knows the future. All we can do is get in line with what's happening now, analyze the past, because that can help forecast what could happen in the future and get in line with it. And one of the best things we can do, folks, Clean and simple entry and ride trends, ride trends and always limit losses. So I just I got to share that with you. It's very important. Risk control is a big deal. So we're looking at the chart here of the spiders. All right. This is the S&P 500. I like look, is looking at the spiders and I'll tell you why, because it's just it's simple. And it's the S&P 500. It's the 500 largest companies basically in the country, in the world. All right. And they're vanilla. It's a great proxy on what's going on. And here's a good maxim for everybody. And I tell this to the VIPs all the time. Price is good above the 50-day, and it's less positive below the 50-day. If you can remember that and apply it, you're going to do much better. And you can see the green line is the 50-day. This is the purple line is the 200-day. The green is the 50-day. The blue line is the 21-day exponential. And the yellow line is the eight-period exponential for shorter trends. Taking a look at it. And this is also very important. Remember this, every price and volume bar talks. Our job is simply to listen, observe, and act accordingly. We don't know the future, but by studying the charts, it'll tell us what's going on at that time. I'll give you an example. Combine price and volume. A lot of people look at price only and ignore volume. Don't ignore volume. Do that at your peril. We don't do this. Like, look at this. It's rallying up. This is a day chart. It was rallying up in October and November. But look at the volume. It was just okay. And then look at this bar. Slight volume pickup. Then it rallies a couple of days. You see this bar? But then look at this bar. It rallies higher, bouncing off the 21 day. Some power. The trend is still up, by the way. I drew this on here, okay? This is what we teach all the time. The trend is still up. But then look at this bar. Look at the selling on that bar, heavy volume. But then you can say, oh, it lifts up on this bar right here. But note the lack of volume. And then it drops again. What do we do in situations like that? It's really simple. We wait. If we're invested, we practice some dis discipline and defense and get lighter. And I need to pause here and share something with everybody. I don't day trade. I don't look at five-minute charts. I don't scalp. I'm not into any of that, okay? I want to try to find clean and simple chart patterns and ride them for all they're worth. How high is high? I don't know the future. You don't either. When we accept the fact we don't know the future, we see the future far more clearly. And that's something to remember. And that's not some cute phrase. That's a fact. So then it falls and then it rallies back up. But note the decrease in volume. And then it falls again. Look at this. Look at this decline here. Look at these red volume bars. They're selling it. And then it starts to lift again. Where's the power? Look at the low volume up versus the heavy volume down. 
rallies up, and then it rolls over again on volume. And right now, what's it doing, folks? It's just chopping around. Mm -hmm. Just got to wait and see what happens. I look at, and this is important, I will look at the S&P 500. I don't look at the Dow. It's only 30 stocks. It's price weighted. It's really, to me, not relevant. I want a broader market indicator on what's going on in the markets. So I'll look at the spiders and I'll look at QQQ. That, that help, and I'll also glance at IWM. I'm really big on rules, systems, and tactics. Um, Evan and I have talked about these things before. Just routines that can keep you on the right side of the action. Notice this. It's falling again today on a pickup in volume. Today's 118, by the way. This is real time. Okay, this is what's going on. Yeah. It's choppy. Is there anything really to do good, good to do with it at this time? Not really. No, we have to leave it alone. Now, I want to take it a step further. We're going to take a look at QLD. Is that okay with you, Evan, if we glance at yeah, that? Yeah, let's, let's run with it. Tell us what QLD is. Okay, good. QLD is the, is the ETF for the NASDAQ 100, the 100 largest NASDAQ companies, the big names, the max. What are they? Well, max list stocks, Apple, Amazon, Google, the names, the stale warts in the market. Okay. And you can see, study this chart. Look at this. Falls. Rallies back up on decreasing volume, starts to fall again. It's below the 50-day, and then it rallies above the 50-day. But note, combined price and volume, look at the volume drop-off. The green bars are substantially less than the red volume bars. There's not a lot of power here. It starts to peak off here, all right? Lifts one last time, and then reverses and gaps down and reverses again. Volume was less, and then the next day, what's it do? It loses the 50-day. That's no good. That's no good. And here's a great lesson for you. This is QLD. I really key on QLD and SSO, and I'll look at the spiders too. But notice how this has fallen. It's below the 50-day, came down near the 200-day, rallied right back up to the 21-day. That's the blue line. By the way, you ever think there and think, gosh, the 50-day, the 20-day? Look at how it bounced off this. To a degree, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Everybody knows about the 50-day, and they use it. Everybody knows about the 200-day. Most people know about the 21-day exponential, and they use it. The eight period has, there's a long story, and I won't get into it. It has to do with a meeting I had with Ed Sakota 20-plus years ago. He had a profound impact on me, by the way. Just, he's one of my heroes. If you don't know who Ed Sakota is, Google him and see what he's done, all right? Good trend guy, too. Anyway, it's falling. Now watch this. This is the NASDAQ 100. This is the 200-day moving average line, and the green line's the 50. Take a look at this chart, and now go here. See how much higher this is above the 200-day? Approaching the 200-day. Mm -hmm. Above the 200-day. What does that tell us? The S&P 500 at this time is stronger than the NASDAQ 100. Which allows us to do what? Leads us to do what? For this time in here, pretty much avoid a lot of the technology stocks. They're just not doing it. And we never impose our will. We let price and volume action guide our actions. By so doing, we stay on the right side of the markets. It, it helps us. It, I give credit to where credit's due. Dr. Martin Zweig, who I had the great pleasure of meeting, I'm listening to him back in the 1980s. And because of him, and his work, um, our managed accounts were out of the market. We missed the crash of 87. And mm -hmm. for that, I'm thankful. But the issue is this. It's not that, oh, we're so good. It's just, folks, watch price and volume action. Combine both together, and you'll make better decisions. And this is what I tell our VIPs all the time. The air is better above the 50-day. The air is better above a rising 50-day. Wait for that, and you will do much better. So here's mm -hmm. QLD approaching the 200 day and I'll show it again here's SSO still well above the 200 day but note here also look at the volume pickup today be careful at this time just be careful watch and see what happens I'll just share this with you just a little bit of tidbit of wisdom mm -hmm. and and again I was an IBD meetup co-leader for 12 years and I was on the stage talking about this stuff you don't need to forecast Get in line with what is. Just get in line with what is. 
and you will do much better. Dave Landry, I had this quote taped to my computer monitor for 20 years. And uh, there's some members in our team that know this, okay, because they'd come over and they said, man, that looks like an old piece of paper taped to your monitor. <laughs> but this, this, this will keep you safe. I'll believe in what I I'll believe in what I see and not in what I believe. I'll believe in what I see and not in what I believe. Let the chart tell you what to do. It will really help you. Hmm. Anyway, Evan, I'm sorry if I went off on a little bit of a tangent there, but I I just want to explain that to you. Just for everybody, um, st stay in line with what's going on. Don't argue with it. And yeah. always please limit losses. We mm -hmm. don't know how low low is. And I'm not being bearish here and I'm not being bullish. I'm just looking at the charts. And right now they don't look the best. That's all. Yeah. There you go, good buddy. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And I was watching you on your YouTube channel the other day flip through a bunch of ETFs. I mean, you went right down the list. And I love how quick you are with some of them. You know, you just you see the picture for two seconds and your brain says, nothing here. And you just go on to the next one. Nothing yeah. here. Nothing Thank here. You. And, and you just, it's just a total disregard. I mean, but it, what it shows is a tremendous amount of patience and someone that has built up a process to to do nothing, right? Which is what you have to do in some of these you bet. tough in fact, markets. If, you, if you'd like, I, I mean, I don't want to overwhelm. I, I could run through the ETFs real quick right now if you'd like to. Would that so, be cool? Or it's like, what would you like to do? Whatever. Yeah, let's. I, I do. I want you to. So why don't why don't you get those ready? And let me ask you though on the on the ETFs here because things are so messy. Are you? Will you short the? Like, are, are you someone that believes in hedges? Or I know we're getting more into like strategy, but like, do you believe in like hedging during these times, or do you let your stop losses and and going to cash handle that type of thing? Great question. I let my stop losses and going to cash handle it. I'll gotcha. just. I'll wait. I'll pull it in. I will look at a couple of inverse ETFs, QID and SDS, which is the flip of QLD and SSO. Yes. I love those too. And I'll utilize those at times. But other than that, there's times that I'll just sit tight and wait, sit yeah. tight and wait. And what do I do during that time? This is a great quote from Abraham Lincoln. If I had eight hours to sh cut down a tree, I'd spend six hours sharpening my ax. You know what I do? I sharpen my ax. Hmm. I'll study and hone my skills, which also leads to another point for everybody. Please don't think you're going to make lose the mindset. I got to make money every day. I got to make money every day. Yeah. You can make a lot of money easily when you get in line with the trend hmm. instead of arguing with it and trying to do things all the time. Sometimes the best thing to do is nothing. And people say, what, what you're a professional trader. No, I'm a professional investor. All right. I'm not in here scalping. I don't want to scalp something for 50 cents or a dollar. Okay. I want to try to let it ride. Trends pay more than all the in and out action, folks. That's the cold, hard reality. No. So I get in line with it. The other thing that's nice about it, you're not tied to your computer monitor all the time. Mm -hmm. So it, it allows us to have a life. It yeah. allows us to breathe and just, just relax. And I'll tell you the truth. I'm speaking from my heart. These are things that I wish somebody would have said to me years ago. Just slow down, yeah. take a breath, look for clean and simple entry and ride it for all it's worth. Yeah. Sell a little bit into strength to guarantee profits. Don't sell all of it and ride it until it stops. Yeah. How long is it? I don't know the future, but price and volume will tell me. Hmm. That's just laying it out there for you, buddy. Yeah, I love it. And um yeah, we'll, we'll run through these sectors now, but I will, I want to just say to your comment, I mean, it's, um, I, I, I kind of have issues with the statement of saying it's, it's easy to make money in the market, but it's hard to hold on to it. And, and what I mean by that is these are the periods where a lot of traders give back so many good gains, so many gains that they, that they fought for, you know, maybe all last year you rode those trends up and yep. then people get turned up and, and they, and this is the tough period. So, um, so if you're feeling the pressure out there, Hey, I, you know, I am too, you know, my account got hit today just the same and I'm taking stops, I'm reducing exposure and that's the name of the game. But um, yeah, lo lots of good stuff from Patrick there. Why don't you take us through some of these, uh, some of these sure. ETFs? Let's just do them. We'll do them together. I'll show you part of my routine and, yeah. and coinciding and complimenting what Evan said. Hey, it's really crucial. There's a time 
I forget how the exact quote goes. I got all these quotes stuck in my head. That's why I'm just starting to lose my hair. Let's not talk about it. But the idea, <laughs> the idea, uh, something like there's a time to make money and there's a time to go fishing. Yeah. Right. And please don't take that. We're going to be lazy. But I just encourage you, don't force it. You can make a lot of money easily with no hassle when things are just kind of trending for you. That's right. And just, just run with it. So let's go through. This is something Evan brought up a good point. I'm going to show you one of my routines. I do this every day with our members. Just where's the strength? We, where's the weakness? I also do this every night. One of the first things I do when I'm running my screens is I look at the ETFs. Why? Here's a statistical fact for you. And I taught statistics on the university level years ago, periodically. Okay. Periodically taught it. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of wired tight with numbers. All right. I'll just share this with you. The vast majority of stock prices movement is related to the industry and the sector that it's in. I'll say that again. The vast majority of a stock prices movement is related to the industry and the sector that it's in. So why don't we sit there and look for strong sectors? If we find strong sectors, we will find strong stocks in those sectors. That's where easier money is made. Let's stack the deck in our favor. Why not? That's the way we work it. So let's do this real quick. Here's the ETFs. This is my ETF page right here. And um, maybe you can take a screenshot of that, folks, if you want. And just this is what I do. You ready? Here, and this is how I do it. Day charts. Biotechnology, dead. Nothing to do with it. Leave it alone. Cloud computing, dead. Below all the moving averages, leave it alone. Dow Jones Internet, dead. Leave it alone. IBD 50. I mean, folks, this is a proxy of the leading stocks, right? And I'm not knocking IBD. I love I, I was a spokesman for him for 12 or 13 years. Meetup leader. There's nothing there. Leave it alone. Be careful with it. Gold miners, dead. Junior gold miners, dead. Gold, it's chopping around. Maybe it'll take out these tops. Notice this. Remember I talked about being above the moving averages? This one's above the moving averages. What's one slight negative? This is a pretty ugly reversal bar on volume. And this is a pretty hard sell volume on volume. And this is a reversal down bar, again, on volume. Be careful with gold. Gold miners are lagging. Maybe it's going to take gold, but there's a shelf there. Cybersecurity is nothing there. Biotechnology, leave it alone. By the way, I'll pause here. I'm not trying to be cute and funny when I'm doing this. Like, hey, what's he doing? I'm just showing you how easily you can do this. I mean, I'm talking. If I wasn't talking, you know, I'd almost be done. But yeah. I want to explain it to you. Online retail. What does this tell us? Stay away from online retailing. North American technology. Look at this. Look at that trend. Now. What's it say? You better be careful with technology. And it's been saying it for a while. Way back here. That's why we've been careful. Dow Jones Medicine. Look at that. I think that needs a shot or something. Okay. That's dad humor. I'm sorry. A lot of you were probably rolling your eyes. Go. I knew Pat would do that eventually. There we go. Nothing to do with it. Mid cap. Losing the 200 day. Be careful. Home builders was leading. Now it's starting to fall. Be careful with that. <clears throat> S&P growth lagging below the falling 50 day. Be careful. IWM small cap. Look at this. And it's been telling you for a long time. Stay away from the small caps. And we have. And I hope you have too. Just look at it. This says ain't nothing to do with it. I'm moving on. Global. Here we go. Airlines. Kind of hanging in, but nothing really special. How about this? Regional banks. Look at the leadership there. It said, and it told you back here, maybe I should look at some regional banks. Biotechnology, dead. Mid-cap, lagging, dead. Um, meta, okay, meta universe, right? Dead, leave it alone. Oil services. Oh, look at this. Look at how strong this has been. Hmm, oil services. Remember that because we're going to go back to that in just a minute. Oil, strong. Online retail, dead. <clears throat> Infrastructure, dead. Software, dead. NASDAQ 100, lagging. Inverse, picking it up a little bit. NASDAQ 100 inverse. QQQ, lagging, just like Retail, dead. Cloud computing, dead. I'm almost done here. Silver's doing nothing. Steel's doing nothing. Semiconductors chopping around. Till it lifts through here, there's nothing to do with it. Semiconductors dead. S&P 500 below the 500 day. Nothing to do with it. SSO leverage dead. Solar dead. Folks, in one second, you look at this and you say, I ain't buying any solar stocks. I'm not even going to look at them. 
And isn't that great? We've got a limited amount of money and a limited amount of time. Why don't we use it to our benefit? I'm about done here. Small caps lagging dead. <clears throat> Uranium dead. Oil. Oil. Remember we looked at that energy ETF? Look at oil. Hmm. Look at that trend. Hmm. Watch when we get to this. Aerospace, defense, nothing. Home builders, dead. Materials was leading, nothing. Energy, leading. Financials was leading, and it's getting cracked here. Still above the 50-day. Maybe something will happen. Industrials chopping around. Technology's lagging again. Consumer staples still strong, but not losing a little bit of leadership. Utilities, dead. Consumer discretionary, dead. Metals and mining, still hanging in a little bit, but a little loose. Look at that tail bar there. Oil and gas, energy. Do you see the theme? How many times, team, did I mention an energy or an oil ETF? It's primarily the only strength. Retail, dead. Software, dead. Back to the top. Now, I was talking. If I wasn't talking or if you have this list and you have it in front of you now, yep. I scan them every day, a couple of times a day. And it tells me where their strength and weakness it guides me to the stocks that I need to look at. It's that simple. I, again, and Evan knows this too. He practices this. We've got a limited amount of money and a limited amount of time. I want to use both wisely. I want to look for strong, strong stuff, strength. This will help you right here just doing this. And now, can I take it one step further? Is that all right with you, Owen? Is that cool, yeah, Evan? Let's hear it. Okay, here we go. So, team, I'll ask you what... Um, I wish we could talk. I wish we could talk to each other. <laughs> what what sector? I'll ask Evan, okay? Evan's on top of this. Evan, what going through those ETFs, what sectors are kind of leading right now? I mean, there's only there's really only one. I mean, it's energy, XLE, right? Right on. Right Financials, on. Sl but yeah. they're cracking. There you go. And then you got the defensive. You got the XLP the, hanging there. There we go. There. Okay, so We've got energy, energy-related stuff leading. You ready for this? Here you go. I'll show you a few of these. CNX, resources, hanging in nicely. By the way, we own all these. HCC, coal, energy, hanging in. Energy, XLE, own it. Oh, and I need to pause here and share some. Please don't think this is Pat Walker bragging. No way. No, that's lame. That's immature. I just am trying to show how you can systematize. And I, I'm speaking from my heart. I wish somebody would have shown this to me. But when I started the business, there was no internet. In fact, I'll show you something. How long have I been doing this? <laughs> Check that out. It's you a relic. The date there? Woo. 1993. I used to get these chart books mailed to me once a week, the green book and the blue book. And some of you are probably smiling, but there's energy. Continue onward. Own it. Own it, banks. Own it. Own it. Own it. There you go. There you go. Now we go to SSO. Anyway, it helps guide our endeavors on what to look for. Hmm. So I wanted to share that with you. Evan, it's a great question. That's one of my routines. I'll go through that just to see where there's strength and weakness. Now, here's the other thing that's really cool. You can take that ETF list and on your system, you want to really speed it up and say, I don't want to scan those dang things all the time. Just sort it by quote, sort up percent. Mm -hmm. The cream of the crop each day comes to the surface and you'll see the themes develop every day. And that really helps you. Anyway. Yeah, I love it. I mean, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, you're very quick at it and um, it, it's intuitively, it makes a lot of sense. So, so we've got some questions coming in. Sure, buddy. And and I do want to uh, encourage anyone that has questions or even maybe at the end, we can do a couple of tickers if you're very interested in some uh, some tickers. But uh, we had one question that came through. We are going to get to all of them, but um, I'm not going to. I'm sorry, I'm pulling it up here. Unfortunately, I am not going to be able to pronounce that name. So I'm going to skip the name, uh, but it does come through and it says, how do you prevent the risk of getting into subpar stocks because you see the sector trend higher? Do you have any thoughts on that? Pat? Great Maybe question. I love that. I love that. Um, Herinator. I like that. That's pretty cool. Okay. I'm the patinator. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Here's what you can do. And there's the Evaninator. Okay. We'll leave hey. all that alone. Okay. If, you're, if your first name was term, you could run with it. Okay. Perfect. Dead humor. Sorry. 
Here's a statistical fact for you. And I'm going to drag this into the window real quick. Write this. Can everybody see that? This is research from Bill O'Neill and company. This was from a book called 40 Great Stock Market Winners. Right here, points two and point six. And I'm going to read it to you. Not to be rude. 80, these, these were stocks that made huge moves, folks. Huge. 87% of them had earnings of 30% or higher prior to their moves. 70% had earnings up 50% or higher prior to their moves. Prior to, before they broke out, earnings were up 30% to 50%. Take the averages. That's why one of my screens is simple. 40% earnings growth last quarter. I mean, you can't argue with the numbers down here. 86% of them had sales up 30% or higher. 63% of them had sales up 50% or higher prior to their breakout, prior to their moves. Folks, do the math. What are we saying? We're saying about 70 plus percent, 75% of all these stocks had sales up on average 40% or higher. Isn't that an edge that you can use? We use that and it really helps us. It really helps us. So what's the moral of the story? Focus on stocks, key on stocks that last quarter's earnings were up 40% or higher, or the average sales for two quarters was up 40% or higher, and it's in leading groups. Do that. You'll start making more money. You're systematizing things. All right. I'm going to drag this out and show another one. Is that okay with you, good buddy? Yeah, let's see it. Last time I talked this fast, I was talking myself out of a ticket. <laughs> okay. <laughs> We'll leave that alone too. Right here. This is very important. Actually, that is the truth, but that's a different story. Okay. You can read all this, the different industry groups. This is IBD research, and I love it. But right here, the last paragraph. Overall, nearly 50% of a stock price's movement performance is linked to its industry and sector. Almost half a stock price's movement is related to the industry and the sector it's in. So what do we do? Systematize. Remember, I just went through all the ETFs. You automatically know where their strength and or weakness, things to avoid. That's what we do. And it's real simple. And you know what's the beautiful thing? It's not rocket science. Strength begets strength. It works. I just wanted to share this with you. Nice. There you go. Yeah, right. I like that. Um yeah, and I think it helps. I mean, I think it helps answer that question because you're you're talking about the the pre-qualification that you're qualifying yeah. the stocks, right? And it's not just picking any old stock because oh, yeah. they're in an industry. It's it's a certain subset of stocks that you're that you're screening for. You got it. And also has the strong industry behind it. You so, got it. You I got like it. That. It's uh and I'll I'll say this. I was really proud of us when was first Daily Graphs online product came out a long time ago. They invited me to be in the beta test group for the original product development. And I need to pause here and share something with you. Please don't think that I've got some kind of an ax to grind or in any way, shape or form. It's like, oh yeah, you're trying to push uh, Bill O'Neill products. Um, no, no, I'm not doing that. I, I don't work for them. I'm, I'm a regular guy, just like you. I pay the same price. I get no, and I do need to say this. I get no discounts. I get no finder's fees. I get nothing from them. I pay the same price as you. No changes. You just need to know that so that you realize this is strictly an arm's length transaction and statement. Okay. So I'm just, I'm just like everybody else, but it's a, it's a good screening tool. And I'm sure some of you have great screening tools. Good for you. Good for you. So, but I did have to say that I just, uh, you need to know that. Yeah, no, that's important. Uh, that's important to know. And that is a fantastic segue, which again, Pat did not know because IBD is a sponsor of this live stream. And we actually have a quick announcement from them. And we're going to be back with another question here in just a second. Oh, so sounds we'll back good. In 60 seconds. Sounds good. Those of you who know Trade Risk know we are all about rules based investing. And that's why we are so excited to have Investors Business Daily as a podcast sponsor. It's almost impossible to avoid boom and bust trading cycles unless you've got a system that works and you're able to stick with it. That's where IBD comes in. They've been helping investors navigate market cycles with their time-tested methodology for over 35 years, which is why you need to check out IBD Digital, their subscription service that gives you access to proprietary market analysis and top trade ideas. 
Start with the big picture to get a pulse on the market environment. Then browse their exclusive stock lists like the IBD50. Finally, use their stock checkup tool to find out more about a company. All of this is available to IBD digital subscribers, and right now podcast listeners can get their first two months for only $20. Go to Investors.com slash Evan, that's Investors.com slash E-V-A-N, to get started for only $20. Now, back to the show. Good, good. That's good content. Yeah. Hey, uh, true, I'll I'll lay this out here, folks. Bill O'Neill changed my life. I'm, I'm not, and my trends, oh, you know, I'm not, it's, it's the truth. One of the greatest honors I've had in my life is, and I could pull the picture up as me talking with him one-on-one. A couple of times I've done that. I had a lunch with him. His foundations are great. They changed my life. If you had to do one thing, I would encourage you, buy the book, How to Make Money in Stocks by Bill O'Neill and study it. I've read that book and I'm not kidding. I bet you I've read that book 40 to 50 times through the years. And I don't think I'm stupid. It's just, there's tremendous content and information in there. Anyway, I, I, I had to show you that though, just credit where credit's due. And he's also a super nice guy. Yeah. So. Nice. Nice. Um, all right. Let's, uh, I see a question from Marius in the chat. Let's pull that up here. And he asks a question. I'm going to take a stab at it first, and then I'll see if you have uh, what your thoughts are, Pat. But he's asking, Marius is asking, what's wrong with weakness and looking for shorts just like you do for strength and look for buys? So my my two cents on this is um, there's nothing wrong with it, of course, right? Mm-hmm. Everyone is going to have their own flair and their own way to approach the markets. So I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And yeah, I do yeah. have a system that short stocks that actually does go out and short individual stocks. So I do do that, but I will say it is harder. It is a different, slightly different approach. And I'm just going to give you one very small example, right? If you are looking to buy a breakout for a stock that is heading higher, I mean, that stock can go for weeks and months and really develop some big trends to capture these big gains. On the short side, it's hard to get those. The, 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 you know, the, the dynamics are just different. You're not going to see a stock. I mean, there's obviously the extreme circumstances like 2008 and some examples where stocks will you know, fall, but there are usually lots of aggressive bounces in there, and it is hard to hold on to those stocks during the, you know, you have to be more tactical. And so I guess my, my two cents is nothing wrong with it. I do it. It's a harder and a different system, and it does require more kind of hand-holding, babysitting, slightly different tactical approaches. That's my two cents. Pat, what do you, what do you think about this, uh, this comment here? I agree with you 100%. It's, it's a whole different animal. Yeah. And think about it. If we're pragmatic, we like to go with the flow. Ask yourself, in your universe of fellow investors and traders, how many of them are really uh, big on shorting? Like, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'll find the vast majority of them are not. They're not really involved with it. So the quote unquote universe of individuals involved with it is less, yeah. which makes it more difficult to get some of those moves. I'm not saying it can't happen, but it is a more difficult, arduous process. Also, you've got to be nimble with it because you can get. You can get rallies that come on and out of the blue and they'll catch you. So you have to really manage it. And then there's something else. Can I share something else real quick about this? Yeah, go for it. I think it's important. There's something a lot of people don't know. And again, I was an investments advisor. I managed money through Fidelity funds and that I managed money for a long time for a lot of different things. Anyway, this is important. And I, I'll bet money 99% of you don't know this. The uptick rule. You have a what? What the heck's the uptick rule? All right. Yeah, I was a money manager. It used to be, in the, and again, I'll just go on a quick tangent here. We all heard about Jesse Livermore and the bear raids during that period of time in the crash of 29. Again, there were bear raids. You could sell a shot, a sell, <laughs> sell a stock short in 1929 without an uptick. You could pound the tar out of it. And that's what a lot of those people did. They would sell it and sell it and sell it and drive it down dramatically in price, which did exaggerate the crash of 1929. 
Okay, that's fact. Most of you probably don't know that, but it did. The professional short sellers knocked the tar out of stocks. Well, most people don't know this. The Securities and Exchange Act of 1933 and 1934, they put in what was called the uptick rule. And what's it mean? If you want to sell a stock short, you have to have somebody buy it first. There has to be an uptick in price before your short order is executed. Again, I bet you money, probably 1% of you know that, all right? The uptick rule. That happened in the Securities and Exchange Act of 1933 and 1934. Well, about 10 years ago, maybe a little longer than that now, they eliminated the uptick rule. They eliminated it again. So what does it mean? Stocks can fall faster in price, okay? So there's the plus with shorting. Be aware of that, but also know there's tremendous pools of money that will go in and buy. Think about all the people you know that are investors. I dare say 98% of them, they're long investors. They're going long. So I just had to share. I'm not saying not to short. No way am I saying that. But I also share this with you. Be careful with it because it can really whip around on you. And the last point I'll make, I think it's very important to be a master of something instead of like, well, I'm a jack of all trades. I can kind of, I can kind of short and I can kind of go long. Uh, you know, I just kind of go with it is. No, master one thing, master it, control it. And uh, that's been a vision of mine and a mission of mine forever is focus on this and nothing gets in my way. Nothing. And I'll also share this with you. I don't even have cable TV in my office. There you go. Simple <laughs> focus. Love it. There you go, buddy. Awesome. Uh, I see a question from Jay in the chat. Let's see if we can bring Jay's up here. So this this came through, I think, when you were running through some of your stock lists uh, or even the sector lists. So Jay asks, can I only trade chart patterns on those kinds of stocks or do I need to incorporate moving averages? So I think that's, you know, when you're talking about the, the 21 SMA, the 8 EMA, all of that. Um, you know, I think this is where the question came up from. I, I have no issues with chart patterns. Uh, my two, you know, if that's the way you like to trade and it works for you and you're making money from it, yeah. go for it. Right. You bet. Uh, yeah. Pat, what do you think? It's a great question. And by the way, all the questions are good. There's no such thing as a bad question. So don't be afraid to ask. That's what I always tell our members. OK, there can be bad answers. No bad questions. And I'm being really serious when I say that. I found through the years that if we can find a clean and simple chart pattern, and it doesn't need to be the cup and a handle. If you wait for the cup and a handle pattern, folks, you're going to starve to death. I'm just telling you, I'm not knocking Bill O'Neill. or anything. You've got to be a master of a couple patterns. One of the things that I find that I've used is a clean and simple flat base. And I'm going to give you an example right here. I'm going to give you about 10 examples. Look at the clean and simple flat base. Everybody saw it. You know, it's vanilla and it pushes through. Volume picks up. There it goes. Zim, clean and simple flat base, and it goes right here. Triton, cup and a handle, flat base, lifts on volume, and it goes. CNX, flat base right here, and it lifts. HCC, this is a cup and a handle formation right here, but it's flat. Watch this. I'll draw the line for you. There you go. And look what it pushes through here. The volume wasn't heavy, but it's in a leading group, and it lifted. There you go. XLE. Clean and simple flat base. You see the point and a volume pickup over and over. Clean and simple flat base. I'll stop. I don't want to you know, beat a horse here. It's simple. Focus on patterns. And it, you can master this. Master one or two pattern setups. Own them. Focus on those. And you can make money. You can make a lot of money. And turn off the noise, all the noise that's out there. Why clean and simple flat bases or clean and simple patterns? Folks. Us buying the stock isn't going to move it. It takes other people seeing what we see. So why not focus on a couple of simple patterns that we know other people see? It increases the potential that they'll buy too. Isn't that what we want? Years ago, I was with a trader out in California. He calls me up and he goes, you're not going to believe this, man. I found the pattern. We are going to print money. I'm not going to mention any names, okay, because he might be listening. We're going to print money. This is going to be awesome. I said, that's awesome. I said, hey. Show it to me. So he shows it to me. I said, hey, that's cool. Um, Does anybody else know about this? He goes, nobody, nobody, just you and me. And I said, oh, I said, so if nobody else knows about it or recognizes it, um, do you think they'll buy? 
and he's, he's on the telephone. He goes, oh, uh, no. I said, yeah. I said, we want to find and master a couple of patterns that everybody can see and use them. That's what we do. Anyway. Awesome. Yeah, sure. Uh, let's let's jump to this. Uh, Mar uh, Marlon asks a question here at the end. So Marlon asks, do you use the EMA crossovers for entries and exits? Marlon, good question. Uh, normally, I don't, but it can be a useful tactic using moving average across those overs. An example, you know, the right here, the eight period crossing through the 21 period. Oh, just to help you all, the yellow line is the eight exponential moving average. And the blue line's the 21 exponential, and the green line's the 50 simple, and the purple's 200 simple. Yes, you can utilize it. I'll say this. I have not seen enough research on it to say that it's truly a, at least for me, I haven't found it to be a viable, a viable tactic. But I'm not saying it doesn't work. It just, for me, I will take the bases here and do this. Like it crossed right here. And you're kind of meandering around here, you know, it's like, oh, God, is it going to go? I don't know. Oh, geez, it gapped down. Maybe I should sell. Oh, geez, what do I do? And finally, it pushes through on a volume pickup, and there is no looking back. It just goes. I kind of meander. I kind of lean on that, and I like it. That's just me. It works for me. And I need to pause here and share this. I encourage you, if you can find, if you have found a viable pattern and tactic that works for you over years, not man, it's really worked the last eight days. Let me tell you, I don't give a rip about that. I want something that can work. Evan's smiling. Yeah. I want something that's worked for a long period of time. Stick with that and you'll dramatically improve your investing results. Also, another point, you'll keep losses much smaller. Like I'm showing you this chart right here and the VIPs, there's, they're listening right now. I know a bunch of them. Price is good. <laughs> they could teach this. Price is good above the line and bad below. That's it. That's it. The best ones just go. They just go. Makes it easier for us. So anyway, there we go. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. All right. We got one. We got a follow-up question here from, uh, what was it? The uh, the Terminator, the, the, the Herinator here. Um, apologies for butchering the name. Uh, how many of the leading stocks are you guys willing to take a position in if the stocks are in the same sector? Now, I will uh, take a quick... Um, stab at my approach is I actually don't cap sector uh, concentration. So I, I used to, you know, I thought a lot about this and I had systems, I think that would always try and diversify, but if the momentum is strong in a sector, I, the, the signals are going to follow and I will have lots of the same stocks in a certain sector. I found that that works for me. I yeah. will still have stop losses, but if things look good, like for right now, energy, I don't have much energy exposure right now, but in this example, it's clear right now that energy is the leader, right? In, in yeah. today's market, then I would be all energy, right? I mean, yeah. if that, I would have no problem being that. And as long as it's responsible with stop losses, that's going to be the key for me. Pat, what yeah. do you think about that? No, I, I'm in agreement with you. You know, I'll get up yep. to where uh, three to six stocks in a sector. Okay. I'm happy with that. I don't have any problem with that at all. Oh, I got to share this with you though, too. And I think this is important. In fact, I think this is really important. People ask this question a lot and it coincides and complements what Evan's talking about too. This is what I found. And a lot of this is research from Bill O'Neill and company. And just from doing this for years, what I've been doing this, okay, is I found a good number of stocks to own, eight to 10 maximum, eight to 10. Now, I'm not telling you what to do, okay? The only time I'd ever tell you what to do is if something's dropping in price and I go, hey, you got to sell. Or if there's a fire in the building, I'm saying you got to get out, okay? I'm not going to do that. But what I found is if you get over 10 stocks, it's literally too hard to monitor them and manage them effectively you start getting sloppy and which leads to losses, great larger losses. So now that's just me. I'm not telling you what to do, but through years, and I've talked to other professional investors, eight to 10 is a good number. Oh, and by the way, you can take eight to 10. You can go on margin on that too. There's no problem with that. That can work. So, and I'm not opposed to margin at all in a good market. So there you go. Yep. Yeah. I love it. Um, 
So let's see. We've got uh, we've got one question here for Gavin, who is joining late, but was asking: Are you trading a swing or are you a trend trader? How do you define yourself usually, Patrick? Trend or swing? Good question. I'm a trend trader. I will ride trends for as long as they as long as they work. However, if a stock runs up, and this isn't probably the best example. I don't know if I could find one. Lifting here, I'm just going to look here and see if I can see anything. Now, let's see, that's a trend. That's just walking up the A day. Much of what we've got right now is trending. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, though, I don't have any problem with swing trades. I think it's great. You know what I love? One of my favorite setups for that is the stock's lifted up. And I probably won't be able to find one now. Um, a stock's lifted up. It pulls back to a moving average. Now, see, that was a breakout. I apologize. I'm not trying to be evasive here. See, this broke out here on volume and, you know, it just goes. But to answer your question pointedly, yes, I don't have any problem with a swing trade as long as it's a viable tactic. And a great tactic is a stock breaks out, it runs up. Well, here, maybe this, this could be an example. I'm not saying it's going to work, okay? But it broke out right here. It lifted up. It's pulled back to the rising eight day. Maybe it'll base for a couple of days and then take out these tops across here. And I'll draw it to be more specific for everybody. Breaks out, pulls back, and then starts to lift again. Kind of a swing trade right here. I, I And again, team, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I don't know the future. That's a, that's a very viable setup. Something that breaks out and then pulls back and then rests like on the ADMA and then starts to lift again. We'll do that all the time. We'll do all that. And I consider that this is a breakout trade and this is a swing trade. Hmm. Another very important point. Always, always, please, I'm asking all of you, if you have a, a tactic to get in, please have a tactic to get out. If your premise is it's bouncing off the eight day and you're buying, I'll ask you the question. It doesn't work out and it drops. Where are you going to sell? You've got to have a spot you're going to sell. In this instance, losing the eight day. That's it. Live by the eight, die by the eight. That'll really help you. There you go. I love it. Awesome. Well, I think we'll, we'll sneak in this one last question, then we'll start to wrap up here. So we've got one last one here from, um, I don't want to butcher the name, so I'm going to skip the name, but how, how much return is possible to make on a year? And this is a question I get a lot, and I'll, I'll take a quick stab at this, and then I'll pass it to Pat. What I always like to kind of throw back right away when answering this question is, well, it depends how much you want to risk, right? Because more risk bigger position size, more use of margin, futures, options, all these things can get you very big returns, yeah. but it's also going to, it's the glacier underneath the water that it's going to cause volatility and drawdowns, right? And to illustrate this, me and Patrick could take the same exact signals for an entire year. I may only buy a hundred shares of each signal, and he is, is uh, you know, he, he lives dangerously. He climbs mountains and he, he, he's done some uh, pretty uh, impressive things in his life. So maybe he wants to take 500 shares for every single signal. Let's say we both had a, you know, $100,000 account. Doesn't matter. But the point yeah. is, is we'll take the same signals. He's going to risk five times more. His returns are going to be five times bigger. He'll probably have less hair at the end of the year because he's going to go through more drawdowns, right? I had to sneak one in there, Pat. I get that one. Good. That's it. Um, so, so it's hard to say returns without risk. It's a, it's yeah. a constant pull. Um, you know, I, I, I don't, I really, I can't really pin down to a number because it just depends so much. So Pat, what do you, what do you think on this question? I agree with your statement 100% and you're not being evasive. You're being upfront truthful. And I'm the same, I'm the, you know, I've got the same mindset. We just, it's a function of, A, as Evans pointed out, how aggressive you want to be. But I'll share this with you. If you say, here's what I'm going to do on, we'll, we'll quantify this statement, on a breakout trade, a clean and simple base breakout like this, okay, or uh, I got to show you a couple like this. And please know this. I'm not doing this to brag like, oh, look at this. No, no. I'm trying to explain. You know, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. I want to show you a thousand words over and over and over again. A thousand words. This one's a little choppier, right? HCC, that's clean and simple, but you got tested here. Okay. XLE, it's clean and simple. 
do this. On clean and simple base breakouts, go bigger. Now, you can say quantify that statement. 100 shares for one person may be a lot. And for another, it may be nothing. So yep. I'm going to back up here a minute and say something. And this is important. Take your account. And as I said before, let's suppose you want to own a maximum of 10 stocks. And I really think that's the 10 is a lot to 10 is a lot to follow. I'm telling you, take your account, divide it by 10. That amount, whatever it is, we'll call X. That's the amount you're going to put in each stock that breaks out. But here's where it gets really important. This is Cansom level three and four. So let's take your account. And again, it doesn't matter what the account size is. Divide by 10. That's the amount you're going to put in each stock. All right. Whatever that number is, the stock breaks out. Your first buy is 50% of X. So if, uh, let's do numbers here. So because percentages can be deceptive. Numbers and percentages, we'll combine them. You're going to put a total of $10,000 into XLE. Your first purchase when it breaks out is $5,000. It proceeds up in price, a couple percent. Your next purchase would be $3,000. Continues going up in price. Your next purchase is $2,000. Five, three, two equal 10. If it doesn't go up in price, the only amount that you had in it is the 5,000. You didn't add to it because it didn't go up in price. Therefore, by default, what does that mean? If it does fail, your loss is much smaller. It's important to think about what you can make, but it's also important to think about what you could lose, which again comes back to why I love clean and simple. Price is good above the line and bad below. It helps us keep losses much smaller. So in a good market, and I'll just, just say one further. In a good market, and the market's a little weird here, okay? Let's cut to the chase. But in a good market, if you are stringent with your stocks and your management of them, you double and triple your money, okay? Without margin, without margin. And I say again, no day trading. Please, no five-minute charts. Unless that's your style. If it works for you, good job. So everybody has to find what fits them and run with it. Anyway, I'm sorry if that took a little long, Evan, but it was, it's, it's an important, important subject, as you know. Yeah, absolutely. Risk management, position size, super important. So I think we'll uh, wrap it up here. Patrick Walker, thank you so much again for coming here and uh, hanging out for the hour. Missionwinners.com. That's his website. Where should other people, where, where should they go anywhere else uh, to check out your work, your YouTube channel? You're posting things there often. Oh, yeah. A lot there. We post a lot on YouTube, a lot of videos. Um, as I said, my background was education. I taught on the university level. You, this is going to, this will tick you off. Okay. My final was 20 pages typed. So here we go. Man, you are a jerk. No, I just, I had high expectations. And, you know, that's where we're, I'm just, I'm very serious about things. And like Evan, you, you want to, I want to do it justice. So, mission winners, we produce a lot of videos. It, uh, it helps me get over my shyness. Okay. I just, it's just like therapy for me, folks. No, <laughs> it helps me get over my shyness, but also, you know, they say a picture's worth a thousand words. If we do a video with commentary. It can be far more valuable than a thousand words because it's in the picture, but with dialogue explaining things, it helps you grasp the concept that much better. So that's what we do. That's what we do. So yeah, mission winners and ton of free content. And then also on YouTube, ton of thousands of videos out there on different topics. Anyway, that's it. Awesome. And Twitter as well, Patrick Walker 56. Make sure you go for the 56. There's lots of people that want to be Patrick and they keep impersonating him. So you got to go for the real Patrick, Patrick yeah. 56. Good point. I, I, <laughs> it's sad. I know you have them too. Yeah. You know, imposters. Yeah. Just please, please be careful with that. Yeah. 100%. All right, folks. Thanks so much for coming out and for tuning in to our first live episode. And we may do these a couple more in the future. But uh, thanks so much. All the notes from this episode, including where to find Pat, will be at thetraderist.com forward slash podcast. Thanks for tuning in. We hope to see you in a future episode. Patrick, thank you so much. Learned a lot. As always, it was fun to hang out for an hour.
You too, Evan. Thank you for having me. I'm honored. I appreciate it. Keep up the good work. I like what you do, sir. And I thank you. Awesome. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care. Thanks.